I am excited about this book would be a massive like understatement because ah! okay so hi guys it's Sam welcome to my channel I don't even know where I am. Hi guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to Book It. And today we're going to be talking about a book that I am so excited. I just finished reading it literally last night at four in the morning. And so it is fresh in my mind. Let me grab it. We are talking about The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Ah! Okay, so I will say this is definitely a book talk book and it is kind of smutty. So trigger warnings for that. But I have read some books off of Book Talk before. When people are like, oh my God, read this book, read this book, read this book. I do. I've never actually enjoyed, like, how do I say this like nicely? So there are some books on TikTok that are absolute trash. And people are like, oh my God, it's so good. Like, no, it's trash, baby. You could just say, oh, this book was trash. You don't have to pretend like you liked it. But here's what I've learned is that when one person says that they like it and it catches on, everybody else likes it, even if it actually is terrible. So then I'll come in and I'll read the book and I'll be like, wow, this is garbage. Why does everybody like this? And then you look and they're like, oh, because the views, the likes, whatever. So I was very hesitant about picking up this book, but I went to Barnes and Nobles, you know, my home sweet home, and it just happened to be sitting there. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a chance and we'll just see how things go. Oh my God. I am so glad I gave this book a chance. It was so good, baby. And I'm not lying. I'm not lying. It was good. So this book is about a guy named Rowan and a girl named Zara. I called her Zara. I don't know if it's Zahara. It's Z-A-H-A-R-H-R-A. -H I called her Zara the whole book in my mind. And it's about the dreamland billionaires. So Rowan works, um, he is a like founder, he's a, from the founding family of an amusement park in Orlando, Florida called Dreamland, which is about all these Disney, not Disney, Dreamland princesses and princes and characters. Wow, I wonder what it's based off of, like I did just say it 35 seconds ago. So it is based off of that theme park, but it is different, you know, for copyright purposes, infringement, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So basically, he is um, currently the director and he wants to be the CFO, while his older brother Declan is going to become the CEO. And they all got letters from their grandfather right when he passed that said, like, this is what you have to do to get your title. So each of them have a different, there's three brothers, Declan, Cal, and Rowan, and they have to do um, different tasks to get the job that they want. So Rowan's job was to figure out how to make the park better. The park is good. How can they make it better? How can they make more revenue? How can they make people happier and have people keep coming back? Obviously they make billions of dollars. It's not like they're, oh my gosh, they're struggling. But his grandfather did want to figure out how to make the park better. So he goes in, um, he comes down from Chicago, which is where he like lives, and he decides to stay in Dreamland as the director and he has six months. In six months, he has to present to a board of directors what his plan is for the park and how they're gonna uh, approve it. If he can get the approval of the director of boards, he gets the CE uh, or the CFO title. If he gets denied, the title gets passed on to somebody else and he's officially kicked out of the family business. So with all that being said and done, he decides to take it and figure out how he's going to make this the best, you know, the best park that it can possibly be. So he runs into a girl named Zara, who is a girl that works there. She works at like the um, magic boutique inside of the Dreamland Park where she makes um, over kids, makes them look like princesses or princes or characters, whatever they want, she does. So he runs into her and he realizes that she's very creative and that she'd be better as a creator. So he promotes her to creator, which has been her job, her like lifelong goal is to like be a creator because the creators of the park get to come up with all the new ideas, the new rides, everything like that in between. He realizes that she does have some talent and makes her a creator as well. So she comes in and she has a bunch of ideas. She ends up, um, he ends up seeing some of her artwork and realizes that she can't draw worth shit. So he gets her in contact with a guy named Scott who works in the illustration office 
Um, in reality, he's Scott. He draws everything for her because he is an artist, but he doesn't say anything about it. She starts falling kind of, you know, she has this little text relationship with Scott, which is actually just Rowan using like a Google or WhatsApp phone number. And they end up like, you know, starting to like each other a little bit. And then Rowan ends up going to her mentorship program because he didn't want anybody else to get her number, a whole big story, blah, blah, blah. And they end up actually spending time together as Rowan and Zara. So they have a relationship over Scott and Zara and then Rowan and Zara, same people, two different love stories. Um, so Zara starts feeling bad because she has feelings for two guys. You know, he ends up coming clean about it, whatever. They end up getting together. Basically, it was a very good book, a very nice slow burn romance. Um, it, they did mention a part about like morally gray characters, which Rowan was considered. He wasn't a villain. He wasn't a, a good guy. He was more of just like a morally gray character. Like he had some things that he's done in his past that weren't good, but he also was trying to make up for them because of her. Um, he was known for cutting budgets and for firing like 10% of people, um, taking away all health benefits of the job, basically cutting it down to bare minimum. And then he met her and everything kind of just fell right back into place, which was really cute and sweet. So I did say that um, it, this is what I said on my Goodreads, is a typical a uh, billionaire romance where he's more standoffish and falls in love with a girl who is not like every other girl. She dry, she rides a skateboard and she collects pins. She's not like any other girl. Um, <laughs> so he is seen as a morally gray character that everybody loves, but nobody wants the superhero or the villains anymore. I gave this book four stars because in all honesty, it was really great. I've had a lot worse books, but I've also read books that were somewhat better. I think this was a very fair rating. When it comes to smut, I know how much we love smut. This book, if you look at my tabs, you will see there are dark ones. Bink, bunk, 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 bunk. Dark ones. Dark ones always mean smut. This book was pretty smutty. Um, more towards the end, like the first like big chunk, there was nothing. Like absolutely. Absolutely nothing in the first chunk. The back chunk completely different so before they actually get together there was no smut between anybody rowan was not seeing anybody else nor did he talk to anybody else he told stories about how girls would poke con uh, holes in his condoms and stuff trying to get money from him whatever and then zara obviously she has an ex-boyfriend who's a piece of shit and rowan does some funny things to him but there is only smut at the very back so i gave it a three out of five i wish i could have given it more but there really just wasn't you know there wasn't, there wasn't a lot. I wish there was more, but there wasn't. And that's okay. So um, the book ends, obviously they're together because why wouldn't the, why would the book end and the romance not be there? Um, and my favorite quote from the book is when she's talking to him and he is being a complete asshole. This is in the very beginning of the book. Um, or maybe like 40 to 80 pages in. It's very, uh, it's very close up there. So right when she first starts working for him directly, she's talking to him and she has no mental filter. She says, I'm going to, uh, I pretend I'm unbothered by his threat. Despite my racing heart, you must have a massive dick to back up that attitude or else people will be mighty disappointed. I love this quote just because I think it's so funny that she says that to her boss. Like, her actual boss, and she's just like, yeah, why not? Sh screw it. I'm going to say that. Which she ends up does saying, and he makes a comment about it. Um, they also do mention, like, HR and stuff in there because he's worried about her going to HR. She never does because, um, obviously, he's a billionaire, and he's hot. Why would you go? He's hot. Hottie patati. Um, also, they didn't cross any lines until a little bit later on. Um, just in t just for the big most part, they were just like really close friends that often shared a connection. Um, so obviously her sister sees it coming first. And at the end of it, I really liked this book. Um, I didn't, there's one thing that I didn't like about, and I'm going to be really honest with it. So in every like romance book that has like, you know, they fall in love and then something bad happens, you know, the big, oh no, are they going to get back together? Are they going to be done forever? That happens. Um, that part of the book really just didn't like get my like it just didn't I didn't care um so another spoiler for the like big like oh no she ends up he ends up telling her that he like you know the reason he hired her on as a creator was not because of her talent was because he thought that she might have something to do with whatever and that their relationship was just used to pass time or whatever
She ends up getting sick with pneumonia because he took her to New York City and she walked around Central Park without like a proper jacket on or something. So she ends up getting pneumonia and gets like really sick and then falls and like busts her head open and she's like bleeding out of her head and has pneumonia. I mean, like realistic, yeah, like that could happen. You could have pneumonia fall and bust your head. I had pneumonia a couple weeks ago, but like, I, I just don't, I just don't get how that was like the, the like the big turning point. Like, the big turning point was like, oh no, they're not together because she has pneumonia because she hit her head because the ambulance was on the way and he's like holding it on her head like, oh no, don't bleed out. Heads bleed a lot if you hit them. Like I, I know that. Like I watched Grey's Anatomy. I know that. Like. If you fall on your head, it's going to bleed a lot. But he was, like, in a sure panic, which, I mean, I think anybody would be in a panic in that situation. But, like, that was the big, like, turning point of the book was, like, oh, my God, is she going to live? She had pneumonia. I mean, people die from pneumonia, but, like, he's a billionaire. She's in a hospital getting the best care she possibly can, and he's paying for everything. Like, they're obviously going to do everything they can. And then by the time they get, like, the ambulance there, she's already getting stitches in her head. Like, her head's fine. But he's like, I thought you had, like, terrible brain damage. Like, what? She just fell. I mean, I understand. I really do get the whole, like, this is what could happen. You know, it was very realistic. Because it could happen. Someone could have pneumonia. They trip and fall. They get a brain bleed. They die. Very common. Very possible. Whatever. Your body's fighting a lot of things. But, like, that was the big climate. That was the big turnaround the story. I don't know. I just, that just really irked me. Like, I was expecting something, like, crazier to happen. Like, someone, like, came in or there was, like, an ex or, like, a bait. Like, something like that. And then at the very end of the book, they had to go and ruin it. She announced that she's pregnant. Thank God they waited till the end because I would not have finished that book if not. So, that was The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. I can't wait to read the second one. I already bought it. I'm literally just going to, I'm waiting for the right time to sit down and just start it. But yes, thank you so, so much for watching. I would definitely read this book. Read this book. Read this book. And make sure you follow my Goodreads. The link is down below. And I will be putting out more videos very soon. I've been very, very busy lately and I do apologize for that. But I will be back and better than ever. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye! Yay!